How's it going, pre cal kids? Today we are looking at 2.7a. Okay, we are going to be looking at, well, solving uh, one variable equalities. Okay. So first thing I want to talk about are extraneous solutions. What an extraneous solution is, it means when we multiply or divide an equation by an expression containing variables, the resulting equation may not have solutions that are not solutions for the original equation. These are extraneous solutions. For this reason, we must check each solution of the resulting equation in the original equation. Okay. An extraneous solution, this is the Mr. T noteworthy addition. Extraneous solutions are solutions, uh, they're found for solving for a variable. No, I'll put by solving for a variable. But guess what? They don't work in original equation. You may say, Mr. Wilger, that doesn't make any sense. If I solve for x, that's what x is. But we get some weird cases. Okay, We're going to take a look at how we check for it. Let's do some examples. Okay, First example. Well, first thing we got to do is talk about some least common denominator, lowest common denominator view. Guys, just remember this. You don't have to write this down. If you do something like this, right? And let's say it's x over 6. What you first need to do is find your common denominator, right? So you make this into 2, 6 plus 3, 6 equals x over 6. Now that we have a common denominator, I can just set up the equation 2 plus 3 equals x. If these are all the same, we don't worry about them. You just go 2 plus 3 equals x x equals 5. Too bad there's not on the homework or test like that, guys. You'll persevere, though. You'll persevere. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Solve x plus 2 over x equals 3. Whew, tough one. A lot of people's first reaction is, let's subtract and do some, some fancy stuff and see what happens, but I want to give you my advice. Okay. Step one, we're going to find the LCD. Okay. It's 2 over x. This is 3 over 1, x over 1, right? My least common denominator, or multiple, because you have my multiple, so is going to be x. And now, what I can do is multiply everything by x, right? Oh, got them all by the side too. So I end up getting, you know, x squared plus 2x over x equals 3x. These cancel, and I'm left with x squared plus 2 equals 3x. And guess what? That looks a lot like a good old quadratic, doesn't it? Because it's x squared minus 3x plus 2. Not only that, it's factorable, right? Because one of my factors are 2. Well, it's 1 and 2 and negative 1 and negative 2. Which one of these add up to negative 3? Well, this one does. So I go minus 1, minus 2. Hence, my solutions are x equals 1 and 2. And guys, don't forget, all examples are noteworthy. Okay. Now, I have to check to see if these are extraneous. What that means is I look at my original equation and I say if I plug one or two into my original equation, does it work? Do I get any funny business? Well, one plus two over one is three. 
Yep. Uh, two plus two over two, which is one, is three. They both work, no problems. So we don't have, we have no extraneous solutions. Uh, here we go guys, only one more example, but it will be a long one, because I'm going to do it two different ways. Okay, so I'll make this way one, way two, two ways to tango. Solve this nasty equation. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'll give you guys a second to write that down. Um, here is going to be my hint. No worthy. Hint factor largest denominator. And they'll usually be factorable. So this guy becomes x minus 1, x minus 3, right? Okay. So let's try method 1 first. My least common denominator is going to be this guy because it's my biggest one that contains both of them is x minus 1 times x minus 3. And we're going to do the same thing we did before where we take our LCD and we multiply both sides of the equation by it. Okay? So we're going to go, you know, x minus 1 times x minus 3. And we're timesing that by 1 over x minus 3 plus our 2x over x minus 1 and that equals we do our x minus 1 times our x minus 3 we're going to times it by our 2 over well I'm going to leave x minus 1 times x minus 3 okay so again find your least common denominator which is pretty much your biggest number that they all multiply into and you times everything by that that's a 3 now what do you notice here these cancel right so you're left with 2 on this side. Now over here, you end up with x minus 1 times x minus 3 over x minus 3. So notice that these guys are going to cancel, right? And you get plus you know, x minus 1 times x minus 3 times 2x all over x minus 1. And we know that these guys cancel, okay? So what we're left with is, well, x minus 1 plus 2x times x minus 3 equals 2. Or x minus 1 plus 2x squared minus 6x equals 2. And I'm going to rewrite this as a quadratic in 1 big swoosh we get 2x squared minus 5x minus 1 minus 3 right okay so again that's way one I want you guys to try both ways and see which one you like better because now what are we going to do our good old uh, quadratic equation so I'm going to hold off on that for this time being because we do have to check for extraneous solutions Okay, second way. If you don't see this way, that's fine. Just follow along, write it down, have some fun. I'm still going to use this factored form. Okay. Now what I got to ask myself is, like I did with the 1 over 2 and the 1 over 3, I said, how can I get those to equal 6? How can I get this denominator to look like this denominator? Well, I can times it by x minus 1 over x minus 1, right? Okay, and now I look at this one. How can I get this denominator here to look like this denominator? Well, I can times it by x minus 3. And you have your x minus 3. Now, since our denominators are congruent, all I do is have to take this top equation and do my, you know, x minus 1 plus 2x times x minus 3 equals 2. 
Now I know some. That's the same equation, isn't it? So I'm still going to get 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. Right? And now from here, so that's done. That's way 2. I like way 2. I think it's a lot quicker. If you don't see it, way 1 works as well. If you don't see either of them, I'm going to put a link in the video below so you guys can watch more examples. And if you come in, you say, Mr. Williger, I didn't know what was going on, and I ask you, did you watch one of the other examples? And you say, no, I'm not going to be a happy camper. Okay. If you see this, that's great. You're good to go. If not, I'll put other links. Because now we have to factor this beast, right? Okay, so that's where these two end. Now we're just going to factor it. So I know I'm going to have my 2x times plus or minus something, my x plus or minus something. I look at my negative 3, so I could have negative 1 and 3, or 1 and negative 3, right? Well, I have a negative 5. And I know 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 is 1 away from 5. So I'm going to try uh, negative 3 over here and plus 1. If you don't get it the first time, guys, remember, just keep trying, because this does end up working out. Because your 2x times that is 2x squared. 2x times 3 is negative 6, plus x minus 5. So you get your negative 3, so that works. So my solutions are x equals 3 and a little sidebar here. Remember, set this equal to 0. 2x equals negative 1. So you get negative a half. Okay. So we're almost done. Now we have to check our solutions to see if they're extraneous. So we have to check solutions. Way to write that, Mr. Fuller. So Let's see. Now, if I plug 3 into this original equation, what do I get in my denominator here? Well, I get 0, right? And now, if you divide by 0, it creates a black hole and sucks the entire universe in it, and we are all doomed. No, but. So, 3 isn't actually a solution, it's an extraneous solution. Because when you plug it into the original equation, it doesn't work, right? you get a zero for your denominator. So you check these, see which ones get zero for your denominator. Let's try negative half. Negative half minus a three isn't zero. Negative half minus one isn't zero. Negative half in here isn't zero, because you get a number times a number. So this only has one solution, and it's negative one half, because three is an extraneous sol solution. I ever put an A here before you guys call ball. Okay? I enjoyed. Check out that other video if you have any other questions or you want to see another example.